those eight beans, four piles around the outside of the plate, I just wanted to say, what the hell are you doing? Yeah. It just looks horrible, doesn't it? I don't have words to describe it. In store today, well, I can assure you, you'll never guess. Under this cloth, there are things that we can guarantee you've never been expected to cook before. Actually, no one in their right mind would cook these, let alone eat them. You want to find out? Yes. All right, here we go. Oh, oh my God, what have they done now? Me I'm not cooking that. <laughs> What I thought was he was going to make us cook goldfish. They're not goldfish, they're robofish. I was trying to tell you that, and I was like, oh, they're toys. And then you're like, hmm, they're coloured fish. Each robofish is numbered from one to ten. You'll each take turns to catch one, and the number on it will correspond with these mystery boxes. Karina and Casey, you're first up. Come on up. <laughs> Here's your chopsticks. Get the pink one, because it's like us. Number eight. What do you think's under here? Before I get a chance to say seafood or fish, because obviously we were fishing, Cadna blurts out a mushroom. And I just feel really embarrassed to be with you. A mushroom? Really? <laughs> <laughs> that is a cow eye. It's all yours. Take it oh. back to the bench. Number ten. Let's do it. Oh my god. Oh, it's huge. It's a big, big fish. It's the biggest fish here today, that's for sure. And it is a kingfish. Mel and Kerry, you're next. <laughs> Number six. Blue cod. Blue cod. Absolutely delicious. What would you like? Anything but mullet. Ooh. It's a terrakee. What number? Number four. four. There's a trevally. Thank you. So if you're going to choose a fish, what would you like to be under this box? Snapper. I think it might be your lucky day. Oh. <laughs> Stoked to get snapper. Mm -hmm. We've got a couple of ideas up our sleeve. Number two, Simon, number two. I would prefer not to get the salmon um, because we have done two salmon dishes already. Salmon. Oh, wow, OK. A beautiful salmon. It's going to be hard to fill it. <laughs> what would be your first choice? Flounder. Right under here is a flounder. Woo! We got the flounder. We got the flounder. Well done. Ooh. Number five. Number five. It's your lucky day is per normal. <laughs> right here, right now under this box is a mullet. Sure enough, we get a mug. Um, yeah, bingo. No surprises there. <laughs> yep. We knew at that stage Everything had gone except for the gurnet. Oh, nice gurnet. Gurnet is a nice fish to work with. And fish and chips is the best. You've got one hour, one fish to prepare, cook and plate two fish dishes. Remember, fish has to be the hero on those two dishes. You've got 60 minutes for this challenge. Your time starts now. One dish is going to be like a Spanish escabeche, which is like a um, vinegar Make sure it goes on top of the fish and marinates it, and then the other one that we're going to do is a ceviche. Uh, we're going to do a uh, hand fried tarakiki on top of uh, stir fry salad. Jack is doing uh, good old fish and chips with beer batter. Look at all the fish you're leaving on there. Oh, you want nice, big, beautiful fillets. Mm -hmm. So anyway, give me your dish description. Um, she's doing like a, a caper anchovy tomato sauce with the cauliflower puree because it's kind of Caper anchovy fish. tomato sauce. Yes. With a fillet of fish on a cauliflower puree. Yeah. Okay, I'm up for that one. That <laughs> okay. sounds good. What's the second dish? Um, the second dish is like an um, Asian chili infused mashed potato with like a coconut broth and a little Asian, Asian coleslaw on top. Kahawa is quite a strong tasting fish, so I know that we it can take like quite um, strong flavours. Everyone gets things like kingfish, salmon, blue We got a mullet. I do believe I may have cooked a mullet about 20 years ago as a teenager when I dragged one up out of some water somewhere. And I had no taste buds at that point, so who knows what I did after they just threw it into a pan and put two minute noodles with it or something. It is debatable whether or not we have taste buds now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to chuck it in the pan with some like, potato and a little bit of spice and some 
onion and do a saute thing. Um, and he's gonna, well, yeah. his plan is constantly changing. My plan is constantly changing. A little over five minutes to go, guys. Be picturing that final presentation. Get it on the plate. We can't taste it unless you've presented it. Because I have my milk on a bit high, it kind of starts to go a bit crusty around the edges. What is it? It's my poaching liquid. I have tasted it. It does not taste burnt. You haven't got the fish in there yet? No, nope, I'm putting it in right this second. It doesn't really look very pleasant, but the flavor's still there, so it's all good. Mm. Slightly off cooked. It's great to really cook bits off. Season it, taste it, make sure it's just right how you love it. Come on, can you wipe the plate? Yeah, put it here. Stop yelling at me. I'm not yelling at you, Jan. Ten seconds. Yeah, just it should have gone in the middle. Five, four, three, two, one. Step away from the bench. Walking up to the tasting, we're feeling really nervous. We are just hoping that our flavours will work and hoping that there isn't any disasters hidden within those dishes that we don't know about yet. Hidden disasters, i.e. scale and bones. Karina, Casey, you got kawaii. Talk me through the two different uh, dishes, please. So my one's an Asian flavoured mashed potato with pan fried kahawai with a bit of butter. Um, just some fresh herbs on top and a coconut sauce. This is just pan fried on a cauliflower puree. Here's some crispy potatoes, fresh tomatoes as well as some canned tomatoes with capers, olives and sardines. What made you choose these two style of dishes? Um, well, that's we do eat kahawai at home and we find it quite oily and um, quite flavoursome, so we like to eat it with some really strong, bold flavours. While Josh is eating it, I'm just watching him and like just trying to stare at the fish to see if there's a bone or a scale in it. And I'm just watching him eat it and I'm honest, I feel so sick. I have no idea what he's thinking. Sensational. It's as easy as that. The kawaii with the um, Asian style mash on the bottom, there's it's so much flavour in it. It's surprising and it gets spicier and spicier. It's absolutely wonderful. The sauce is great. You've chosen the right flavours for the, for the right style of fish and I think that's the most important thing here. Amazing girls, got to say. That dish takes me right to the doorstep of Italy with the flavours in there. I thought that was a pretty grand comment. I was like, are you sure, Simon? <laughs> <laughs> are you sure that's the doorstep of Italy? Uh, you know, you two are on fire. You know, I, I think there's a lot of people out there who should be pretty worried about it. I reckon you guys can go all the way in this competition. This dish here, James, is this your dish? Looks stupid. It definitely looks stupid because I really couldn't, after trying to figure out a way to make this thing, I couldn't figure out a way to plate it. That having been said though, it tastes really good. Like, really good. So I'm quite happy with the flavours and I'm hoping that'll pull us through. If I was to overlook the fact that your potatoes are slightly undercooked, I would say that has a really good flavour. You put just enough cumin in there. You haven't turned it into a curry but it has a lovely savouriness about it. I think you've matched it up really nicely with what you chose to put with it. Good. Thank you. Go take it. <laughs> Why do you boys keep doing this to yourselves? Yeah, I thought it started off okay with what you looked like you were going to do down the back there. As, as soon as you put those eight beans, four piles around the outside of the plate, I just wanted to say, what the hell are you doing? Yeah. It just looks horrible, doesn't it? I don't have words to describe it. That's right, because I don't know what to say either. No, no one knows what, everyone's in shock. It's like someone's died. Yeah. Honestly, I want more, I expect more. I, I get devastated when it's like this. Because it ain't much fun. It was just uh, a bad day in the office. Exceptionally bad. <laughs>